Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel on Engineering Mathematics. In this video, I am going to discuss examples based on effect of division by t, first shifting theorem and linearity property for finding Laplace transform of the given function. So let us start with first example. In this example, we are asked to find Laplace of 1 by t into 1 minus cos t. This function is like 1 by t into f of t. So here f of t is 1 minus cos t. We will first find out Laplace transform of 1 minus cos t. Using linearity property, we can write this as Laplace of 1 minus Laplace of cos t. Now let us recall Laplace of 1 and Laplace of cos a t. We know Laplace of 1 is 1 by s. You can treat 1 as t raised to 0 and you can apply formula of Laplace of t raised to n or you can refer my previous video where we have found Laplace of constant functions. So Laplace of 1 is 1 by s and Laplace of cos a t is s upon s square plus a square. So here we will write Laplace of 1 as 1 by s and here a is 1 so Lap Laplace of cos t is s upon s square plus 1. Now we consider this as phi of s. Now we proceed to find out Laplace of 1 by t into 1 minus cos t. For that we recall effect of division by t to find out Laplace of 1 by t into f of t. It says Laplace of 1 by t into f of t is integral of phi of s ds over the limit s to infinity where phi of s is Laplace of f of t. We have already found Laplace of f of t which is phi of s. It is this. All we have to do is we have to substitute this phi of s over here in this integral and evaluate this integral. So Laplace of 1 by t into 1 minus cos t is integral from s to infinity of phi of s ds. Our phi of s is 1 by s minus s upon s square plus 1. Now let's integrate this. Using standard formulas of integration, we can write integration of 1 by s as log s and integration of s upon s square plus 1 is, yes, any, any guesses? It is 1 by 2 log of s square plus 1. I am using this formula over here. It says integral of derivative of f of x upon f of x dx is log of f of x, log of the denominator. So look at here, if I consider this as f of x, then its derivative is 2s. So in numerator, we have just s, we don't have 2s here. So I will multiply and divide it by 2 to get 2s in the numerator. So its integral is 1 by 2 log of denominator that is s square plus 1. So integral of 1 by s is log s, integral of s upon s square plus 1 is half log s square plus 1, this minus sign as it is over the limit s to infinity. Now, I wanted to apply property of log which says log a minus log b is equal to log a by b. But unfortunately, this half is making trouble over here. If we have half here as well, we can take out this half, half common and then we can apply that log property. So to do so, I am going to multiply this term by 2 and divide it by 2. And that numerator 2 goes in the power of s using log property which says a log b is equal to log b raised to a. So doing so, here we can write this as half log of s square. Like this. I hope you understood this. Now we can easily take out this half half common. So after taking out, we will have log of a by b. This is using property of log which says log a minus log b is log a by b. Now we can easily substitute these limits but I see when I substitute this upper limit infinity in s we get log infinity upon infinity which is indeterminate. To avoid so what I will do I will divide this numerator and denominator both with the same term of s which we have here. So we have s square here and here so I will divide numerator and denominator both by s square. So in next step, we get log of s square upon s square, which is log of 1 upon s square upon s square is 1 again, 
plus 1 upon s square over the limit s to infinity. Now we can easily substitute these limits. When we put infinity in s, we get log of 1 upon 1 plus 1 by infinity. But what is 1 by infinity? 1 by infinity is 0. So we get log of 1 by 1 that is log 1. Then minus sign before substituting lower limit. Lower limit is s. So after substituting s in s, we will end up with the same term which is log of 1 upon 1 plus 1 by s square. After cross multiplying this and simplifying, we get log of s square upon 1 plus s square. And we know log 1 is 0. So this term becomes 0 and this term becomes log of s square upon s square plus 1. We know one property of log which says minus log a by b is log of b by a. So using that property over here, we can write this term as log of this minus becomes plus log of s square plus 1 upon s square in this way. So this is final solution to Laplace of 1 by t into 1 minus cos t. I hope you guys understood this example. So let us proceed for next one. Here we are asked to find Laplace of 1 by t into e raised to minus a t minus e raised to minus b t. In this example, this is our f of t that is e raised to minus a t minus e raised to minus b t. So first of all, we will find out Laplace of this f of t. Using linearity property, it can be written as Laplace of e raised to minus a t minus Laplace of e raised to minus b t. Now let us recall what is Laplace of e raised to minus a t. It is nothing but 1 upon s plus a. So what is Laplace of e raised to minus b t? It is 1 upon s plus b. We call this as phi of s. So phi of s is nothing but Laplace of this f of t. Now we find Laplace of 1 by t into this f of t. For that we need to recall effect of division by t. That rule says Laplace of 1 by t into f of t is integral of phi of s ds over the limit s to infinity. So let us write that rule and substitute phi of s in it. Here phi of s is 1 upon s plus a minus 1 upon s plus b. Now let us integrate this. Once again we will use the same rule of integration that we have used in example number 1 which says integral of f dash x upon f of x dx is equal to log of denominator that is f of x. Here denominator is s plus a, its derivative is 1, it is there in the numerator. So integral of 1 upon s plus a is log of s plus a. Same thing here, its integral will be log of s plus b. This is integral of 1 upon s plus a, this is integral of 1 upon s plus b over the limit s to infinity. Now here we can directly apply the log property which says log a minus log b is log a by b. So we get this over the limit s to infinity. Now the time comes when we have to substitute the limits. When we substitute the upper limit infinity in s, we get log infinity upon infinity once again in determinate form. So to find out its value, we have to use the same trick that we have used in example 1. We will multiply and divide this numerator and denominator by 1 by s. This denominator s is the same term that we have in the numerator as well as in the denominator. By doing so, we will have log of s by s is 1 plus a by s divided by s, s by s is 1 again plus b by s over the limit s to infinity. Now we substitute the upper limit infinity in s. As we have seen in earlier case, when we substitute infinity in s, constant upon infinity is 0. So we get 0 here and here. We end up with log 1 by 1 which is log 1 minus. Now we substitute s in s again. We end up with the same term which is log of 1 plus a by s upon 1 plus b by s. And we know log 1 is 0. And after simplifying this can be written as log of s plus a upon s plus b in this way. Now once again recall property of log which says minus log a by b is log b by a. So we can write this as 
log of s plus b upon s plus a. So this is our final solution to Laplace of 1 by t into e raised to minus a t minus e raised to minus b t. I hope you guys understood this. Now let us proceed for next one. This one is an interesting one because here we have e raised to a t term. That means we have to apply for shifting theorem. Let us see this example. Here we are asked to find Laplace of 1 by t into e raised to minus t sin t. So here e raised to minus t sin t is our f of t. Let us find its Laplace first. And to do so we have to use first shifting theorem. According to first shifting theorem we have to first find Laplace of sin t. And what is Laplace of sin t? That you can find by recalling Laplace of sin a t formula which is a upon s square plus a square. Here a is 1, so Laplace of sin t is 1 upon s square plus 1. We call this as phi of s. Now we apply first shifting theorem to find out Laplace of e raised to minus t into sin t. Let us recall first shifting theorem. It says Laplace of e raised to minus a t into f of t is phi of s plus a. And what is phi over here? It is Laplace of f of t. So our phi of s is 1 upon s square plus 1. And using first shifting theorem, Laplace of e raised to minus t sin t will be phi of s plus 1 because our a is 1 here. So let us replace every s in phi of s by s plus 1 to get phi of s plus 1. So I will put s plus 1 for this s to get phi of s plus 1 as 1 upon s plus 1 the whole square plus 1. No need to expand this term, you can keep it as it is. This is Laplace of e raised to minus t sin t. Now we proceed to find Laplace of 1 by t e raised to minus t sin t. For this we need to use effect of division by t rule. It says Laplace of 1 by t f of t is integral of phi of s ds over the limit s to infinity. And what is phi of s in this particular case? It is Laplace of e raised to minus t sin t which is 1 upon s plus 1 the whole square plus 1. So let me substitute it for you. So this is our phi of s. Now we have to integrate this function. And what is its integration? It is nothing but tan inverse of s plus 1. Yes, it is tan inverse of s plus 1 over the limit s to infinity. Now let us substitute these limits one by one. When I put infinity in s, we get tan inverse of infinity, which is pi by 2. And when I put s in s, we get once again tan inverse s plus 1 as it is. This term can also be written as cot inverse of s plus 1 because we know pi by 2 minus tan inverse theta is cot inverse theta. So pi by 2 minus tan inverse s plus 1 is cot inverse s plus 1. I hope you guys understood this one as well. Let us proceed to the next example. It is find Laplace of 1 by t into sin t into sin 5t. Clearly here f of t is sin t into sin 5t. So we first find its Laplace transform. And to do so, I would like to recall trigonometric identity of 2 sin a into sin b. Which is cos a minus b minus cos a plus b. In our case, a is t, b is 5t. So what is a minus b? It will be t minus 5t that is minus 4t but cos is even function so it absorbs that minus sign we end up with cos 4t. And what is a plus b? It will be t plus 5t that is 6t. So here we will have cos 6t like this. Using linearity property this can be written as Laplace of cos 4t minus cos 6t. To find Laplace of cos 4t and cos 6t, I will recall Laplace of cos 8t formula which is s upon s square plus a square. So this becomes s upon s square plus 4 square and this becomes s upon s square plus 6 square like this. You can call this as phi of s. Now we are all set to find out Laplace of 1 by t into sin t into sin 5t using effect of division by t we can write this as integral from s to infinity of phi of s ds. Here phi of s is this term. Let us substitute phi of s here. Now applying this integral. 
Now let us evaluate this integral. Integral of s upon s square plus 4 square using the same integral formula that we have used in example number 1 and 2 can be written as half log of s square plus 4 square and this can be written as half log of s square plus 6 square over the limit s to infinity. Here we can easily take out this half half common. So we end up with half log of s square plus 4 square minus log of s square plus 6 square. And using the property log a minus log b which is log a by b we can write this term as log of s square plus 4 square upon s square plus 6 square over the limit s to infinity. Now we know if I substitute infinity in s we will have log of infinity upon infinity. So to find its value we will divide numerator and denominator both by s square. So we get log of 1 plus 4 square by s square upon 1 plus 6 square by s square like this. Now you can substitute this infinity in s and when we do so we get log of 1 plus 4 square by infinity upon 1 plus 6 square by infinity and constant upon infinity is 0 so we get 0 here and here we left with log of 1 by 1 which is log 1. And log 1 is 0, so we get 0 here. Finally, we substitute s in s, so we get the same term again, this term, which is nothing but this one, that is log of s square plus 4 square upon s square plus 6 square. And because of this minus sign, that denominator goes in the numerator and numerator becomes denominator. So our final solution is half log of s square plus 6 square upon s square plus 4 square. I hope guys you understood this example. Now it is your turn to solve some examples of the similar type. These are some practice examples. Please do it yourself. Their final solutions are also mentioned here. So that you can tally and compare your answers. Guys please write me in comment box whether you are able to solve these examples or not. And if you like this video please click the like button and share it among your friends. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my new videos.